In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the animation characteristics of the presentation environment. So we've already accomplished how to pull components apart with the tweak components command. And we've done this so we can create good documentation drawings that you know, can show balloons and parts lists very effectively. Based on what I have here, I'd be pretty confident with creating this as a piece of documentation and ballooning it on a documentation sheet. But that's not where the fun ends. I actually want to come in here and create a nice animation so that our shop floor personnel, maybe a piece of collateral I want to include with it, maybe something I want to put on YouTube, something on Facebook, depending on how you're doing your social media with your products. Maybe I just want to create a nice animation for how something goes together or in reverse gets pulled apart. So we're going to take a look at this explosion. This is the loader exploded IPN from our working files directory. This is basically a completed version of what we saw in another video. And in order to really start understanding the animation process, I need to take a look at this animate command. When I come into animate, essentially I have an interval, which is a time frame this falls within. It's not in seconds, it's just an interval. How many repetitions I would like, and the motion to go in forward or reverse. I also have the ability to record this out to an AVI or a WMV file, but this is not as simple as it sounds. All this will do is take the tweaks that I did and play them in reverse order. So I'm going to do that first here so you can see that. So I have my rubber grommet going in, I have this piece coming over, I have these two pieces going down together. So far pretty straightforward. I have these pieces coming down, I have this block coming in and then rising up. So far this is making sense. I have these two little nut screws and washers coming in. I have these smokestack coming in and rotating up. I have the dump pail coming in and dropping down. And when I think about that, even the smokestack too, some of these movements could be combined, I would think, so I wouldn't have to do them separately. Here I have all the axles and wheels rising up, the axles going in, the wheels going on the nut screws and the wheels on the other side going on at the same time. So basically I'm getting a feel for how this animation is currently set up based on how I pulled things apart. I'm going to hit reset. Now if I expand these chevrons here on the dialog, I'll get to see that I actually have about 18 sequences. Each sequence applies to when I applied a tweak. If I came up here to find something like the tire assembly, three, tire assembly, four, if I keep going a little bit higher, there's the handle, that's the smokestack there. You can see they are two separate sequences. One of them is the linear movement and the other one's the rotational movement. But you know what? Why can't I have those together? So I'm going to hold down shift and select them both and click on this group button here. That will then group my sequences. So I go from 18 down to 17 sequences. And some other things I want to adjust were the dump pail. So I want 9 and 10 grouped together as well. It's important before you start messing with the animation too much that you do try to group things the way you want them grouped. Down at the bottom, the nut screws and the tire assemblies. You know, why can't I just have those all go in at the same time? So sequence 15 and 16, I'll go in at the same time. Sequence 13 and 14, also at the same time. I've got myself down from 18 sequences to 14, a little bit more manageable. You can also see that you can also reorder by using move up and move down. So let me apply this right now and just kind of take a look at some things I might want to reorder. So I'm going to reduce these chevrons again and play this back in its current state. I got the grommet going down, got this piece coming in and dropping down with the other block at the same time. Now here I have those pieces dropping and then coming over and the blocks come up. May I want the blocks to come over and go up and then the screws to go down. So I'm going to hit reset right now and identify those in here. I'll find my double cubes. Those are those movements. I have the washers and the threaded rods and the nut screws in here. So I'll just click and move down on that. So basically it moves it before that movement there. Since the cubes weren't really grouped together, I need to make sure I watch that. So the other double cube movement there. There's six and seven. All right, let's apply that. And watch this again. So again, grommets coming down, blocks moving over, moving down. Now my double cube should move over first. And now these will drop this time. I successfully have reordered my animations a little bit. 
There's my combined movements. Very good. I can do more things with this as well. So if just the grouping and ordering wasn't awesome enough for you, I can also change my camera angles. So for instance, when the grommet drops down, I'd like to be zoomed in a little bit further, like right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Now I'm gonna move over to a sequence view. This is done on our browser filter here. I'll change to the sequence view. Here I can see animation task one. Here's my 14 sequences that I just spent time looking through and make sure I understood. So I'm gonna right click on task one and say edit. This will bring up a dialog box called edit task and sequences. So the first task and sequence I want right here, I'll go ahead and set my camera and I can change my speed interval on here as well. But I'm gonna apply that. Next up, this piece goes in and they go down together. I wanna to make sure I show this hole hitting that grommet top. So I'm gonna kinda of zoom in here a little bit to this angle. For sequence two, I would like to set the camera there and apply it. For sequence three, they're just basically dropping down, so I'll keep it there. Sequence four, where my cube's coming over. So I'll go ahead and just rotate over here to worry about this angle. And for sequence four, I'll set the camera there and apply it. And just to get a little bit more artistic, I'm gonna to go to the side here, just using my cube to get around. I really wanna showcase these threaded rods coming down and going into these holes. So that's for sequence five. I'll set the camera there and apply it. Sequence six was the nuts from the bottom coming in. So I'll go to the bottom shot here. For sequence six, set the camera and apply. The next sequence was the dump pail and the smokestack. So for this, I'm gonna to go to about this side view over here, these next sequences. So I'll go ahead and set the camera there and apply. Same thing for eight. Sequence nine was the front part of the loader coming in. If you've gotten to the point where you forget which sequence it is, you can hit the little play button here to see what it actually does. Okay, so there's sequence nine there. You can see I was off a little bit by my selection. So I'll just kind of verify here. Here's five. That's good. You can see I was off there with the camera angle. I want that to be on the top instead. So before I get ahead of myself, I'll go ahead and fix that. Nice little tool there so you don't have to keep going back and forth by using that little play button. So I really want the camera here for that sequence. Sequence seven will be the bottom shot. Let's get a nice rotation on that. Set the camera and apply. Sequence eight is where I wanted to be over here. Sequence nine, also here. Make sure I just play that again. There we go. Sequence 10 is now this front loader piece coming in. Go here to nine, 10. There we go, we'll set the camera there for 10. And I'm gonna slow that down. So I'm gonna move the interval here to 40. It'll just be a slower movement. Sequence 11 was the axle and tire parts rising up. For that, I'll just go to a wide shot here just to show them rising up. Sequence 12 was the axle rods going in. Here I'll go to this orientation here. Put it right about there. Tilt up a little bit. Set the camera there and apply. 13 was the tires on the left hand side coming in. Go to a back shot over here for that. Set the camera and apply. Next sequence was the final tires coming in. For that, I wanna be kind of a wide shot here. I don't really need to be focused too much in on that. Go ahead and set the camera there for sequence 14 and apply. Now that I have my camera angle set, I'm gonna go back to animate and start this again. 
So here, not only do I have the sequences controlled, the order controlled, but I also have camera movement controlled so I can really focus in on where certain components are going. The next step in this process is to create the animation video once you're happy with the animation movements you've created. You can see here that piece is going in a little bit slower because I increased the interval. There's all the parts going in. So now that I have that, I can hit my record button. Also, I can go to the end by little bits of intervals, fast forward through this really fast. And I can actually do a record and play it in reverse order. So do a disassembly. So let me go ahead and do a record this time. Let me get back to standard orientation here for this beginning interval. Just back this up. If I hit the record button, I can then save this out as a WMV file or an AVI. My preference is AVI. And here I'll just create a quick explosion. I'm going to save this in my working files directory in the chapter we're working on. For the settings here, Microsoft Video 1 codec has got the best compression ratio based on what you get provided with out of the software. I'll say OK to that one. And I'll go ahead and hit play. And this whole process now is now recording this out to a screen image. After this is finished, we'll have a nice video saved in our directory. We can then put that into a PowerPoint. We can put that into a web page. There's a lot of things you can do with it. If you have to use the WMV format for some reason, make sure you choose some really high quality outputs. The default settings for WMV aren't necessarily the best settings that you would use for creating a WMV or Windows Media video file. The AVI does produce a very large file though, I should say. There, the animation is saved. I'm just going to open this up with Media Player really quick. Now, the other things I would usually do on this to get better quality is I would take this gradient color and I would change my color scheme to a white color scheme first or a neutral color scheme. Something that's not this gradient color because I get these lines in it when I do that. Also, I like to put my title block on the background image as well. So here you can see I definitely have a good video that got output from here. Go ahead and close that. And I'll talk to you about those settings a little bit. So if I just go to my application options, and I go to colors, I can change my background to a presentation, one color that gives me that bright white background, very clear, very neutral. I could also stay on winter night with my gradient, but instead of gradient, choose background image. And then I can load up a white you know, bitmap or PNG file I might have created that has my company logo in the bottom corner of it, upping that presentation quality. So this has been a look at animating an exploded view inside of Autodesk Inventor.